orders. The DRC is the natural as yet missing hold of stability in the historically troubled region of Central Africa. We may not have noticed it, but this is the region, perhaps in all of the world, in which there have been the most number of peacekeeping missions, a total of seven peacekeeping operations in ten countries since that wave of independence in 1960. Those of us on the ground, therefore, and I admit to great parochialism starting my seventh year in the Congo, uh, we view the just concluded Congolese elections to be the most important potentially for Africa since the 1994 elections in South Africa. Why do I say that? There's a range of reasons, but I would single out three. First of all, as I stated in my opening remarks, Congo is one of the world's greatest humanitarian tragedies. Secondly, its enormous economic potential, which I just mentioned. And thirdly, perhaps most importantly, Congo is the key to stability in the only region of Africa that has never had a center of political gravity. And if Africa's worst conflict can be overcome, then so can other conflicts. For this to happen, however, the international community should not abandon the DRC prematurely, but instead build a partnership with the newly elected authorities, consolidate peace, and promote economic recovery. The people of the Congo and Africa, in our view, deserve nothing less. Ambassador, we'd like to uh, please open it up to questions. So uh, I'll, sir, in the back. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, as a person from Congo, I want to congratulate you to what you have done in our country since then. But uh, at some talking, I'm so troubled that uh, in your speech you didn't talk about the conflict that is, the, is taking place in North Kivu. As you recall, last time when you were here, I asked you the same question, and uh, I warned you that what was going to happen, and the effect is happening. You have around 50,000 people are running in the hilltop, in the North Kivu, uh, and the fighting going on. Are you aware of the political parties that are requesting that that problem found a political solution and also the chief tribes in the North Kivu, all of them are asking that this problem found a political solution. What do you think about it and what are you going to do about it? Thank you very much. It's a very good question because there has been renewed fighting in North Kivu <coughs> over the past few weeks and it's of great concern. Uh, there was a confrontation between the 81st and 83rd Brigade on the one hand and the other forces of the FARDC, the Congolese Army, that displaced uh, thousands of people who took to the road to go to Goma. Uh, our North Kivu Brigade, I'm talking about the UN's North Kivu Brigade, an Indian Brigade, uh, helped stabilize the situation, helped get the people back home, and helped stop the, the hemorrhaging there. It broke out again after that, and so it's this to which you're referring. There is still considerable instability there. Several things I would say this. First of all, the elections have already begun to change the situation in those conflict areas. People there, including the forces that you're speaking about, have understood it's a new chapter now. They're all looking for a way out of this. President Kabila himself was in Goma a few days after his inauguration. There are discussions that are ongoing between a government delegation and the forces that are loyal to Lorong and Kunda. The key to the issue ultimately is to remove the cause around which he is able to rally people, and that is right now a work in progress. But I think there is a sense that there is a holistic approach to it now, combining military pressure, 
with political discussion, and I'm confident based on that that a solution will be found and it won't be long in uh, coming about. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. I applaud the, the job you did in, uh, in my country. But I say the Congolese drama uh, is for more than one century. Uh, I don't want to open another debate in the debate we have now. But I have two main concerns. The first concern is that uh, talking to an uh, American ambassador, I think that uh, the main concern of the American policy is the fight against terrorism. And uh, since then, we heard that they called uh, Zairianization in my country, the economic Zairianization. The Congolese economy is mainly controlled by the Hezbollah, the Lebanese people. And I think you find them in most of the Congolese country. And those guys are working out of the financial, the international financial and economic uh, network. They are laundering the narco dollar working in the Congolese economy, uh, trying to, to have the diamond of all different mineral and uh, uh, Congolese wealth. And I know at that time, as the President Bush and the Congress and the American people are focused on the fight against the terrorists, we are seeing that, uh, and I have here um, um, the, some newspaper, the Times of England, France of Belgium, they made some um, some research and they have uh, uh, many information they are giving about the way those terrorists, mainly the Hezbollah, are uh, uh, taking the Congolese uranium. Mm -hmm. And today, as we are talking here, there are a Congolese plane that are blocked in um, one African country with uranium. And we are afraid that this uranium can serve for to make it a dirty bomb and may make, maybe make the catastrophe in America. And so it seems to us that uh, uh, the election process in my country did take in account that drama that is to happen about the, the terrorist activity in my country. That's the first. Sir, please be quick because we have some I finished the, the second point. And the ambassador talked about the election in South Africa, 19, 1994. Those, this election could be held earlier than 1994. If it didn't happen, it was because Mandela refused, who was the main political leader in South Africa, he refused to be part of an election that was not um, on the way that the people of South Africa wanted. And it seems to me that was the same in my country with Chisekedi, with the man is, uh, as the Congolese Mandela. He was not part of this election. And so it seems to me that uh, the future of this uh, uh, process can be uh, can be uh, put in. Uh, sorry for my poor English. Can be uh, let's say uh, will not succeed because Tshisekedi and the majority of the people who are with him are out of the process. Thank you. Let me 